There's something about the stars and space and its infinite distance that makes you ask, are we alone? What's out there? And if we're not alone, who's out there? Welcome to the Film Alliance. A lot of times we get so caught off guard with our craft that we forget to stop and just take a look at the beauty around us. Time lapse is one of those things. When I went out to shoot my first night lapse, I was reminded of that. So when I first started, I had no idea what I was doing. But over the past couple of weeks, I've made it a study. And now I feel like I know enough information to share it with you. The first time that I went out and shot a night lapse, I caught three shooting stars in the same frame. I'm gonna walk you through the steps on what gear you're gonna need, how to set up the ZVE-10 to get those type of night lapses. And then if you stick around to the end, I'll show you how I took all of the images and I threw it into Final Cut Pro to make an actual video file. Don't get mad at me if I'm not doing this 100% correctly, but the results I'm getting are pretty unbelievable. Now let's talk about what gear you're gonna need in order to go out and get your first night lapse. Thankfully for me, Viltrox recently sent me the Viltrox 13 millimeter F1.4. So I've been able to utilize this lens on my ZV-E10. And it's been great because it has a super fast aperture at 1.4 and it goes to 13 millimeters. Now when you throw it on the ZV-E10, it does crop into 20 millimeters, but that's plenty wide for getting a night lapse. Now it is better to have a wider lens than having like a 50 millimeter prime lens on your camera because then you can see more of the night sky and you'll get less of those star streaks. If you're shooting by your house, then you can just run an extension cord to your ZV-E10 and power it that way so it can get powered a very long time rather than just relying on the battery that is inside this camera. Or you can get an external battery and hook it up to your tripod just to extend the amount of time that the ZV-E10 will shoot. I'm using this one, which I picked up from Amazon, but it literally does not matter which one you use. This one claims to have 10,000 mAh, and the more mAh you have, the longer it's gonna last. Because when you set up your camera to do this night lapse, you can't really just hang around and wait for it to be done because sometimes it could take four or five hours. I mean, you could wait if you want, but I'd rather go to sleep and then wake up the next day and get my camera. With that being said, you wanna check the weather to make sure it's not gonna rain at least less than 5% chance, and also that there's not gonna be any overcast skies or a lot of moisture in the air that will put some dew on the end glass of your lens. And you have to make sure it's not going to be windy. Another thing that you're gonna need is a nice steady tripod. I use the small rig selection tripod. It's my favorite tripod. I mean, it's not that heavy. I would probably think it'd be better to get a heavy tripod, but this one works just fine. You can easily adjust it up and down and for the night lapses that I did, it worked perfectly. The reason why you want a steady tripod is because if a breeze comes through or a gust of wind and it shakes your camera just a little bit and your camera moves a bit, then it's gonna ruin your entire night lapse. So you wanna have a nice steady tripod. The key to getting a good night lapse is to do it when the moon is not 100% lit up in the sky. So you just have to figure out in your area when the moon is going to be most hidden. And I would recommend learning moon phases in your area. About every two weeks, the moon is full or it's shadowed because the moon's orbit around the earth moves between the earth and the sun. Unfortunately, I didn't learn any of that in school or if I did, I just forgot about it. But here at the Film Alliance, you're gonna get a free astronomy lesson. I ended up purchasing an app called Photo Pills, which easily told me about the moon phases. And then also I was trying to figure out where the Milky Way was because I thought if I could get a Milky Way shot, I would just impress the heck out of everybody I know. The shortcuts that I have set up on my ZV-E10 are the same as the cinematic settings video that I made for the ZV-E10. So if you wanna follow along with shortcuts, then go watch that video. 
But don't worry, I show you where everything is inside the menu system in case you're new to this school. Now let's go outside so I can show you exactly how I set this camera up and how I angled it at the sky in order to get a really nice night lapse. So the very first thing that you wanna do is make sure that the camera is locked down to the tripod head. So I have it swiveled around and I'm gonna make sure it's locked on and make sure that my camera is nice and steady so that a gust of wind can't come through here and maybe turn the camera this way or back a little bit or if you're on a hill, have the entire tripod fall over. You really can't have the camera move at all because you want your long exposure night lapse shot to, to stay as steady as possible. If it's not and it moves a little bit, your shot's gonna be ruined. The next thing that you wanna do is turn your camera on and switch it over to photo mode. You can switch to photo mode using the top button. It'll get you to photography mode and then you'll be all set. Next, go ahead and turn off your stabilization so you can get the widest shot possible. I set that up in my function menu so I have easy access to it. Then I'm gonna turn manual exposure on. On tab one, page one, I'm gonna turn the file format to JPEG raw. That way I can have two different pictures to pick from, JPEG and RAW. RAW for the professionals, so that when you go into Lightroom you can edit it better. And JPEG for those of us who are kind of amateur and we don't really need to send off our footage to National Geographic. Then I'm gonna to go to uh, tab one, page two, and then turn off the long exposure noise reduction. Generally, if you have this turned on, the camera takes two pictures. One picture is the actual long exposure shot that you get and then the second picture is a post-processing picture so that the camera in the body can go ahead and do some post-processing work to the picture so that it has less noise. But I found that it doesn't really help me that much for night lapses like this one, and I would rather not wait double the time for it, the camera to take one shot. Now go to tab one, page three, and go to drive mode, and set your self-timer to two seconds. This way the record button won't mess with the long exposure shot. So when I press on the shutter button for my camera, the jiggle or the shake from my hand on the camera won't mess with the camera. I'll press the shutter button and then keep my hand off of it and then it will take my shot. So that's pretty important to make sure that it's set to two seconds. Now go to tab one, page 10, and make sure that manual focus assist is turned on. This is gonna help you when you try to manually focus on those stars. Now you can change your auto white balance to incandescent if you want. I've kept mine at auto white balance and I haven't really had any issues with it, but I know I've seen a lot of videos and posts out there that say to get the best night lapse, turn your white balance to incandescent. Now, depending on which lens you're using, if you're using a zoom lens, zoom out all the way so your shot is as wide as possible. I'm using the Viltrox 13 millimeter F1.4. It's a prime lens, so it doesn't zoom at all. So it's the perfect lens for astrophotography. Now turn manual focus on and make sure focus peaking is on. I set that up through my function menu so that when I turn the manual focus ring on the lens, the stars will turn red and that's the color that I have it set to. I turn my ISO anywhere from 500 to 1000 depending on how bright the sky is, maybe from the moon. But my general rule is to keep the exposure compensation set to 0.0. .0. So if I bring my shutter speed way down to like 15 or 20, then that means I'm gonna to have to take my ISO down as well. And I'm just trying to keep that exposure compensation at 0, 0.0. So as long as you do that, you should be good. Now bring your aperture as wide as it will go. In my case, I'm at f1.4. A lot of lenses are f2.8, and that's how wide you wanna take the aperture. Now I turned my shutter speed down to eight on the first time lapse that I did, and then 20 on the second time lapse. I didn't see a lot of difference in that, but I did notice that the longer shutter speed that I go, the more of a star trail I get. Now your display is going to look like this, all noisy and weird and nasty. And it freaked me out at first. I thought, oh, maybe the ZV-E10 isn't capable of taking night photography or astrophotography. But then I just was like, you know what? I'm just gonna press the shutter button anyways and see what happens. And sure enough, this is what happened. So don't be freaked out if your display looks noisy. I don't know why that is on the ZV-E10. Maybe you know and you can tell me in the comment section below. So this is how the picture came out and I'm really happy with that. So now I'm gonna turn on interval shooting. It's important to take a shot before you turn on interval shooting because then you can get a reference of what your frame looks like, what the stars look like, what the sky looks like, what your foreground looks like. 
And once you're happy with that, sometimes it took me like four or five times, but once you're happy with that, that now you can go to interval shooting and turn that on. So I go to tab one, page three, and I turned interval shooting on and I set the interval to 15 seconds and the number of shots to 1930. That way I know it's just gonna keep on shooting until the battery runs out. Now you can play with these numbers however you want. The more shots you take, the bigger file size it's gonna be, but the more frames you're gonna see, so it's kind of up to you. But I found the sweet spot to be around 15 seconds. Make sure to cover the camera with a bag or something, just leaving the front of the lens exposed, just in case it does rain or it drizzles a little bit. I put a plastic bag over it and it worked perfectly. But with that being said, don't get mad at me if it rains and it ruins your lens or your camera. Once you have your files, in my case, it's about 478 pictures. I drag them into Final Cut Pro. I press Control D and then I tap one. So it'll turn into one frame each. And then I press enter. And then every single one of the pictures turns into one frame. Then I highlight all of them make it a compound clip. After I'm happy with the time, then I go ahead and color grade it using the color wheels. Maybe I'll bring down the shadows and bring up the highlights a little bit. Maybe I'll put a little saturation in it to make that sky a little bit bluer. And then I'll export my clip in 4K. And that's how I shoot night laps the easy way with the ZV-E10. Now, if you're into getting really high quality time lapses, you can always take these photos into Lightroom or into Photoshop Raw and really get down to the nitty gritty of how to edit them. Now there's a lot of videos out there that explain how to do that, so I'll leave that to those guys if you're interested in that. But you do the same thing, you edit all of your photos and then you can just bring it into Final Cut Pro, Control D, press one, so it changes all the frame to one frame, and then a compound clip, and then from there you can do a little color grading and then export it. If I missed anything, let me know in the comment section below so I can promptly answer you or you can help me out and the rest of the community out when it comes to astrophotography with the ZV-E10. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was valuable. I'm Joe with the Film Alliance and until the next video, have a nice week.